with the farming update out or out soon enough, you guys are going to want to know how to do a basic setup for farming that's going to help you out. Now, this can be applied many different ways. You don't have to do it in a particular way that I'm showing you here. This will just give you the basic rundown, rundown and some of the elements that you will need to execute on this. So, and give you some basic explanation for a lot of the new items that are in. Okay, so, oddly enough, uh, the crop plots that we have are now going to be uh, the new place where you do all of this farming stuff. So uh, what I like to do here is, again, you can fit this into your base so many different ways. I just want to show you some basic configurations and some uh, basic amenities and things that your crop plots will be looking for. Light is one of them. The other one is water. Clean water, not salt water. And just so you know, any salt water, even one milliliter, will contaminate your entire setup. So just be aware that it is very bad for you and your crops. Okay, so we're going to do four here. You don't have to do this many. I'm just trying to show you that using like a low wall is like a nice way to, to grid these up. Now, these might snap for us on the console side, but if they don't, these will still fit if you stand on this wall and crouch and then fit it in there. It'll take a little bit of wiggle. Just think this is like very similar to us setting up our TC rooms with boxes. We're all pretty used to it now on the console side, so it shouldn't be anything terribly crazy. So uh, we still have the same crop plots. We've got the skinny one, which is three crop plots, and then we have... Uh, the big boy, which is nine slots. Um, this will be good for cloning and such, although you can do it in the larger box. We won't go over a lot of the cloning. We'll probably just touch base on a few things because uh, that'll be a whole video in itself. Okay, so now that we have these in here, you can destroy these little twig patches here. The reason why you want to stick these in a grid is it can be a very efficient way to both water and to light your crops. So let's go ahead and place a light here in the center. If you place a light in the center, I think, are we right there? Uh, if you place a light right smack dab in the middle, uh, you can light all four of these bad boys with one light. So again, now that we have electricity, it can be much more efficient. So let's go ahead and get this bad boy going. Um, just assume this is either a solar panel or, well, you know what, let's go ahead and extend it over here. And this is just going to give you the basic rundown. Again, take these things and jam them into honeycomb and other places that make sense for your setup. Um, just trying to show you, like, and some people might do larger pieces like this or larger bases and builds because, you know, uh, grow operations will definitely be a thing. Okay, so instead of setting up all the solar panel stuff, I'm just going to place one of these power units around the corner and we'll just hook it in. So just assume this is either wind or gas generator or whatever. It's going into the battery, so we'll actually have it getting a charge right now. Okay, so first things first. I do like to use these a lot in this setup because you can really like almost make like a power outlet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a few of these next to each other and we'll bring in the main power on the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is uh, we've done this before. Sorry, I just slid off the back there. Um, I'm just going to label it like this. So remember, branches priorities on the left. So this is just a nice way for us to make a very consistent spike bar or power outlet. And this is going to main power here. Okay. So this light's only going to take two units of power. So what we're going to do up here is we're going to go right to the power in. And place it right on this first branch. Now, here's the other thing, too. So crops will need water. They'll also need light. But they'll also need um, a level of heat if you're out here in the winter biome. And we are. So let me go ahead and grab some of these uh, barrels that already have water in them. Clean water being the key and operative word. Where are you, barrels? There they are. And let's just put, I don't know, this one right here. Perfect. So now what you can do with these jugs is you can uh, just drop them over your crops. You don't even have to use the sprinkler if you don't want to. So like right here, these all take 9,000 milliliters. And it's not enough still. Let's go ahead and grab another one. I think we'll need like three of these, give or take, to get it going. Again, we're on PC because we have the ability to admin custom server-ish around. So it just helps moving things along here. And so yes, um, dew collectors, water collectors, big and small will be a thing. Cleaning water or even bringing salt water over from the bandit camp will definitely be a thing in the future. Uh, yeah, we're uh, close enough. Okay. Uh, next big piece, what we're going to do here is since we're in the winter biome, we're going to have a heater. Now, typically, you probably want one on either side. Uh, it will go through the floor as well. Uh, this should be enough if our range is in sync with the PC. 
So actually, let, you know what we're going to do? We're going to take this into, I guess, right over here. We can just have it as a pass-through, but you know what? We'll make this as a heater itself. The heater is going to be here. Each of these heaters are, what, three apiece? Okay, so we're going to need six across the board. So the other one's going to come across the way over here. I'll just have it do this. Just like so. My cabling looks like Tron. Okay, so that'll be six total. So we can go to this branch, type in six, because you'll need this at all times. Same with the light. So what we're going to do is switch our cable to green. We're going to bring this right up the wall here and bring it over to the top. And there's our light right about there. And what's cool is these both have pass-throughs, so the light and the heater. So what's really nice now is we should have better heat for these, and we should have decent light. And these should be good to go as long as we're um, having a consistent amount of water here. You can already start to see, like, even with a couple crop plots, it's getting pretty nutty. This should give us, once it looks moist, there it is. It's at 5,000. Uh, you know you're ready to go. So another thing you may want to do, um, a lot of times because salt water is going to be the most accessible, you're going to want to put a water purifier or a desalinator around, and you want to have a switch by it as well, because this you don't always have to have running. And you may want some type of water input as well. And this will kind of curtail nicely into our talk about, whoopsie, about elevation. Uh, water pumps and splitters, because uh, you're going to need a way to store the uh, the water. So if you have in water, right, like let's say you've got a lot of salt water that you've collected or you're pumping, you may want to stick them in these bad boys first. I know we're actually using these for something other than a trap base. And then you can combine them with a fluid combiner, which I think is this one. Yes, okay. I always confuse which one's which. And so uh, here's the other little tip. As long as the water is not going a long distance and it's going from top to bottom, it will actually flow without a pump. So as long as you're doing this here, let's see, where's the, the faucet part? This should flow freely from those containers. And then what we're going to do is then connect it to the input of our desalinator or water purifier. Where are you? Oh, there it is. And then what we can do here is, well, yeah, we'll put a switch, even though technically we're using the power at all times because uh, we ha we're using it from a branch. But anyways, I mean, I guess we could technically run it all the time, but in the order of keeping things consistent here, let's not make that green. Let's make it purple. I guess what we could do off the top here is maybe make it off of a splitter or something, and then that would probably do it. Although this is getting pretty inefficient as far as power is concerned. But this, hopefully you guys have a good grasp on electricity, and if you don't, you know I've got uh, good tutorials on that. <laughs> this way we can actually use it as a power source and cut it off when we need to. Is that right? Yeah, just like this. Okay, so if we ever have an input of water there, this will actually clean it. We have a little bit of a reservoir here, and then this is the output. So the dirty water on the black, clean water on the blue. And so now that you have it here, maybe you want to stick your water up higher, because maybe you want to use it for your crops later. I don't know, something like that. What you could do, um, we'll just create an example here. And again, this is meant to just give you like the basic rundown. This isn't like, we'll have more in-depth stuff on this later. Um, but what this can do here, oh, there we go, is let's say you have your clean water stored up higher because you want to use it for free as far as uh, your sprinkler system. There we go. Let's place that right there, and then we'll use our admin thingy to fly, and maybe we'll put one more right here. So let's say you want to stick your clean water up high, right? So down low, um, what you're going to want to do is pump it. Let's move pump. Okay, so pumps can be used without power. They can be used as a valve if you want to, but since we're going to go from lower to higher, we're definitely going to have to power this bad boy and have it go up. So let's go ahead and just make this something obnoxious like, I don't know, white. Right? 
Nope, that's pretty hard to see. Why would I do that? I don't know. Pink? Pink's good. And so now we can take this bad boy and put it up the wall. Now, in theory, if I connected this correctly, we should be able to push this all the way up to the top. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to put a splitter on the top. <laughs> so what we're going to do is put a splitter here. And then we'll bring the cable all the way back down again. So let's go ahead and do that right quick. What do we pick? Pink? And since this is higher, hopefully this will push this up high enough where it then gets pushed into the splitter and then gravity will push it down for that little amount of distance that we have left. Ta-da! Okay, so now what we can do is take our um, splitter and then connect our different water barrels. And by the way, uh, there's also a water purifier for the campfire as well. I know we have it in the game, but it doesn't really have a lot of function. Well, it will now. So now as water gets cleaned through the water purifier or the desalinator, it is going to push it uh, up the wall here. So uh, what we do have to do is make sure this is powered, yes. Make that yellow. Do I remember where the power input is? Not the toggle, by the way. <laughs> I've done that so many times. So now, if things are working correctly, let's go ahead and grab just a little bit of water for ourselves. Probably go upstairs and use these canisters. Man, I wish we had these cars, man. 2,000 milliliters, 200,000 milliliters is the best. This is, are the teas easy to make? Uh, yeah, they're not bad at all. We can kind of show you like a quick rundown on that. These are where it's at, I'm telling you. Alright, just gotta get... These now hold 5,000, which I think has been updated for us on the console side a while ago. But Alright, so let's say we put dirty water in here. It's clean. Let's say the water purifier has been running. Now we have water that sits inside of here. So, it's not going to go anywhere because the pump isn't on. And also, it's closed. So even if we had gravity working for us, this wouldn't go anywhere. But, if I did this right... Now that this pump is on, it should be pushing the water up here into the splitter and then inside of these water containers. And ever so slowly, that is the case. And the beauty of this is, now we can use all of these together for our water system downstairs. So let's go ahead and use a fluid combiner here, just for argument's sake. And then let's put a spr sprinkler, excuse me, down here. I think... You don't have to put them over everyone. And there's there's a more efficient way to do this, but like I said, we'll just kind of do this in a more loosey-goosey fashion. So again, since we're using gravity now uh, from this water barrel itself, what we can do is we can combine all of this here to the fluid combiner from the faucet portion, which is up against the wall, making that rather difficult to push. But you can see now we don't have to use as much power to get it back down here. So what we can do now is these are all being combined together. Ooh, you know what? Let's go ahead and use a pump as a valve. This will be a good tutorial for that as well. So uh, we have the yellow coming from the combiner itself. You know, we should probably, eh, we'll leave it up here. You can actually put this inside as long as it's vertical. All right, so fluid input here, and then we'll make this orange. Or should we make it? Let's make it blue. So because that fluid pump doesn't have any power, it's just going to be used as a valve. So as long as we've got the gravity situation working for us, and we should, uh, it will now pipe it through all of these uh, fluid sprinklers. What are they called? Fluid sprinklers? Sprinklers. <laughs> just sprinklers. So you can see now that because we had to go vertical, this takes power to go up. But now that, that it sits here and it's being blocked by this valve that doesn't need power, as soon as we flick this on, gravity will push it down the yellow into the blue and into our sprinklers, in theory. So let's see if we got that right. <laughs> Watch, I do this and, and it's not right. Ta-da! And you would probably have this valve downstairs. But already, uh, you can see, and don't worry about um, water on electricity in the game. Worry about that in real life. 
Um, it, it actually, you can you can water all kinds of things. Here's another little tip while you're out here doing all of this stuff, ladies and gentlemen. The um, the water goes through walls, floors and walls. So any level of salt anywhere, like one milliliter, will contaminate entire crops. Keep that in mind. You can use that against your enemies. But more importantly, you need to make sure that um, you don't accidentally dump salt water somewhere because you can actually ruin uh, a whole genetic farm, all kinds of stuff. Also, if you would like to, um, well, you have to do this. Please make sure that you don't have this next to your furnaces because this will knock them out. I know. I know. Because it's water. I think this will even reach it out here. So let's go ahead and turn this off real fast. And if you think about it, if you make a timer system, you can make it look like you're home when you're not. Just saying. That's a thing, too. So let's say we have this on. I'm pretty sure that'll reach it. So once we have the sprinkler system on, this should turn it off. Yeah. And it works through walls. So make sure that your crop area is kind of away from your furnaces so you don't have any leakage. Something to think about. Um, using water catchers is good as a general, but um, I, you can't really sustain a whole farm like that. You're really going to have to be running back and forth or using something like a water pump that sits in a source of water. Or um, it, realistically, you may have to take like 10 of these blue barrels and run into bandit camp or to a clean water source and fill them up and then come over here and then store them on your base and then just have them run through when you need to. And then water your crops when you need to. So like if I need these watered, you know, um, not topped off, but like we need them filled, you come over here and then dump your barrels this way. And then what you can do is if we have all the conditions right, and I believe that we do, let's plant my favorite potatoes. Now what you can do is you can start to plant in the planters here. A uh, quick tip with genetics. We're not going to go into uh, depth on genetics. Here's what you want to look for if you're going to start to do stuff. Just know that red is bad, green is good. The best green are G's and Y's. H's are okay, but really what you're looking for are seeds that have either all greens or just one red. Um, just to kind of start with your whole breeding process, your cloning process, your genetic process. Uh, and yes, these are for everything. We have uh, five different colors of berries. We now have even pumpkins and corns go onto this old system, or onto this new system, rather. And so you really have to be on the lookout for all of these different genetics and stuff. If you're not really worried about it, that's fine, too. You can just plant all the way. Uh, another quick tip with genetics, if you're trying to have them not crossbreed, place them in the corners of the planter box. Do not place them next to each other or else you'll get some weird crossbreeding and you can lose your super seed. So remember, if you do have a super seed, if you're lucky enough to have one, just know that you need to clone a bunch of those in advance so you don't um, lose it or they accidentally get crossbred. So if you have something like this, let's say it's a super seed, you would just clone one of them and then it'll pop out like this. We know what clones are, we've had them before, but now you can actually see when you clone them, you can actually see its traits, W, Y, G, X, X, and X. Just so you know, that is a trash, trash genetic configuration, but that'll just kind of help you get on your feet. One more thing uh, that we forgot here, the water pump, the water pump, yeah. Uh, that uses five water, you place that in the water itself and it'll pump both salt water and fresh water and uh, you're gonna have to use your storage systems also to juggle that if you have to clean it. I would say uh, make sure you have storage units to uh, pump the water. Have the blue containers, have small boxes where you put these containers in. I keep a nice like in and out box if I'm gonna have to do things like clean water manually, which is realistically what we're all gonna be doing. And then use water catchers to kind of sprinkle or supplement w would maybe be the word. But just so you know, even having this many water catchers on your rooftop is not gonna be enough to even do one crop plot. So. Um, it helps, but it's not uh, the end-all, beat-all, so you really have to stay on top of it. So that's how you set up a basic farm for Rust Console Edition, and hopefully this will help out and this will work into your different designs. Your honeycomb, your bases, you can definitely make this a lot more condensed, but you can also make giant grow operations and fishing operations to make mad, mad scrap over on the shoreline. So be on the lookout. The money is going to be flowing after this.